My name is Tomasz Pruski and I'm a senior level designer for CI Games. I'm here to tell you about Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. We start the game at the safe house. One of the player's hubs with access to the most important tools. At the weapon cache, we are free to choose a loadout which corresponds to our current gameplay needs. In Sniper Ghost Warrior 3, the players are encouraged to experiment with three complementary playstyles. The Sniper, the Ghost and the Warrior, each having its own challenges and rewards. The laptop is used to browse currently available missions and choose which one of them we want to start. Your target is Ivan Khrushchev, a high-ranking officer with one of the syndicates. We were able to track him to the blocks, though we can't pinpoint his exact location. He's also under heavy guard, so <coughs> don't be fancy. Just ice him and get out. Copy that. After choosing mission, we are shown the game's recommended approaches from the Sniper, Ghost and Warrior paths. This is just a recommendation though, and we will not be penalized for choosing a different approach to accomplishing this mission. <coughs> After leaving a safe house, we will always have our vehicle waiting for us in a convenient location. When arriving at a mission area, we will sometimes hear info about optional objectives that can be completed for additional rewards. I've got more info for you, John. A military drone crashed near your vicinity. Luckily, its GPS is still operational. I'll send its last location to you. Find it and recover the data before someone else does. Roger. Be careful on the roads, as you might encounter a variety of deadly military patrols. After we've chosen a good secluded spot, it's time to use one of our recon tools, the drone. The drone lets us scout out a location from a fairly safe distance and mark our enemies and points of interest like mortars or minefields. Be careful not to be noticed, the enemy will attack the drone. When we've gathered all the necessary intel on the location, it's time to move in. First, we'll use the sniper approach. This means evading the enemy from a distance and finding a good spot to take the shot. The building opposite to the heavily guarded outpost looks like a prime location to set up a sniping position. Kill for a warm meal. 
When a path seems to be blocked, use scout mode to look for places that you can climb. <coughs> to be another way. The balcony looks like my only way out of here. view of the entire outpost from up there. That's the drone we're looking for. Roger that. We found a perfect sniper nest, but we still don't have an exact location of the target. We can use tagging bullets to find nearby enemies and tag them even through walls and obstacles. I've got a visual on Khrushchev. Target confirmed. That's our guy. Find a spot to take him out. In scope view, we can zoom in on the target, adjust the scope to the target's distance, and offset the aim to combat wind influence. When we're finally ready to take the shot, we can use breath control to stabilize the sway and then pull the trigger. Target's down. Nice shot. Now get out of there. Okay, let's go back and try that with a different approach. The ghost path is more focused on sneaking in the shadows, luring enemy soldiers into traps, and performing silent takedowns. When playing as a ghost, remember to hide in tall bushes, shoot out lights, and use the environment to gain an upper hand. Kill for warming. The worst. Scout mode also shows us interactive objects. We can use some of them for sabotage to ambush our enemies. If there are any soldiers in the vicinity, they will investigate these objects and provide us with an opportunity to strike. We don't have to perform an immediate takedown though. If we are sure that we will not be spotted by other enemies, we can try to interrogate our victims to gain vital information like the location of our target or the distribution of troops on an outpost. Talk or I'll break you! No! I'll, I'll talk! I've got a visual on Khrushchev. Target confirmed. That's our guy. Find a spot to take him out.
there will usually be an alternative route to your target, aside from the most obvious main entrance. So it pays off to do proper recon before entering an enemy outpost. Some of the objects highlighted in the scout mode can help us create additional scenarios during missions. In here, we can mess with our target's TV antenna to lure him out to the roof. That way, we don't have to get too deep into enemy territory. <coughs> Targets down. Good job with that antenna. Don't stick around. Let's try that one more time with a more aggressive approach. Warrior gameplay is all about creatively using all the tools in our arsenal to eliminate our enemies. However, it is best to have a backup plan and do proper recon before attacking head-on. Going in guns blazing against a horde of enemies without a plan will often spell our doom. Talk or I'll break you! I'll talk! I've got a visual on Khrushchev. Target confirmed. That's our guy. Find a spot to take him out. Use lots of gadgets and hazardous elements of the environment when playing as a warrior to create chaos and destruction within enemy ranks.
Keep an eye on the health bar because it does not regenerate automatically. Explosion on the perimeter! Report! We'll investigate! Guys, I think. Opening fire. Thanks for watching this video on Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. Follow us on social media for more info. Hi, thanks for coming. My name is Jess LeBeau. I'm the lead narrative designer for Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. Uh, I was the uh, original world designer for the Guild Wars series. Uh, I did some original story work for League of Legends. More recently did uh, DLC for Far Cry 4. I've been with uh, CI Games on this project for about a year. This is Alec. He's also part of our narrative design team. We're going to walk you through the demo here. So you are an American Special Forces operative illegally behind enemy lines in the country of Georgia. Uh, the United States and NATO is fighting a proxy war against Russia through the civil war that's taking place in this country. Uh, it's, an, it's an open world experience. Okay, there, are, there is a storyline that does take place in a particularly linear fashion. However, there is a lot of uh, other open world activities and preparation that you have to do in order to be able to complete those missions that you see. So we're now about, I'd say about a third of the way through the game. Uh, we're, we've done, we've been doing collecting intel, doing reconnaissance. We're on our way back to our safe house to get our next mission. Um, but as we're fond of saying, the world itself, the terrain, is an enemy in uh, Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. So we want to make sure that we don't stumble into anything uh, that's going to kill us. So we're going to use uh, one of our gadgets. Alec is demonstrating the drone. When you're in the drone, you're in first person. You'll see Morning. that the mini-map doesn't have any enemies on it until you tag them. The way you tag them is to see them, either through your drone, uh, through the scope, uh, you know, uh, hacked uh, security cameras, visualization. So you see he's got them all, added them to his mini map. And clearly the Russians are up to this no good because they've mined this area, they don't want any incursions. Again, the terrain can kill you, it's an enemy. So to deal with that, we've given you a couple of tools. The first is what we call extreme navigation. Rappelling, parkour, climbing over fences, uh, dealing with terrain that uh, you might, you know, more vertical, uh, uh, things that you might not necessarily be able to go over. In other ways. The second is what we call scout mode. And this is you accessing your special forces training, right? Things that you already know as, a, as an operative. You see here, he's analyzing these footprints. Alec, what did you find? Uh, Castle steps, military boots. So probably there was a guy that was setting up the minefield. So now Alec has uh, several options. He can extreme navigate his way around it. He can disarm these mines. Uh, or he can track this guy, who clearly has been the one that laid the mines, uh, safely through the minefield. Does it disappear after a couple of times? Uh, if you do not track it, uh, the, 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 the problems or the difficulties won't appear, the, the mines, uh, you will be able to go back to that. Um, so he's also got a skirt, this patrol that he saw earlier, and the sniper. What you saw there was our detection uh, meter. Um, stealth is obviously very important to the game. So this is our safe house. This is the crafting bench. You can craft bullets, you can craft scopes, pieces of your rifle. Uh, Alec has picked up some health kits and uh, some body armor, and now he's going to contact JSOC and get his mission. Now, for the past few days, we've been doing reconnaissance. We know about the Russian operation here. The leader of the Russians is named General Vitkovich. JSOC says, locate him and kill him. So what you're looking at here, again, open world experience. This is a local map, right? This is just the area, so this is a small section of it. This is your safe house. This is another safe house that you've unlocked, either through missions or exploration. When you unlock them, you can fast travel to, uh, from one to another. Now, this isn't teleportation. Uh, time does pass. Uh, but the conceit is, in an open world, we, we know that you can safely move from one safe house to the next. So here we are in the safe house. Uh, Alex is going to select some weapons for the mission with a name like Sniper. Of course, we've got a bunch of cool rifles, right? Uh, but we've also got handguns, machine guns, Knives. 
Your drone, of course, might need to be repaired if it gets, if you crash into something or it gets shot. Uh, you might upgrade it. Uh, you might have to buy a new one. You might have to retrofit it for certain tasks. So Alex is going to select a knife and a sniper rifle. Uh, if you've done crafting, that'll appear here when you assemble your rifle. And he's going to head out for the mission. As I mentioned, time has passed. We have a dynamic weather system, so now it's raining. Uh, if we come out here at a different time, it might be foggy, it might also be raining, it might be sunny. Uh, so things change. So what did you find here? It is a weird truck because it appears that somebody drives it the body for you. So you can use the scout mode to learn information about side quests, things we're calling uh, war crimes, right? These are optional, but they, they can unlock tools for you later. So perhaps this guy that was dragged through here, maybe it's a dead body. Perhaps it was someone that was captured. Maybe if you track them down, you find that someone's been captive, uh, and you, you can release them, and maybe they'll give you a key to a tower or something that will unlock a sniping position you could use later. One of the other uh, as cool aspects of scout mode is that you um, it can access uh, what we call um, stances. So if you hold your rifle unsupported like this, it, it's more difficult to control, right? If you, if you use parts of your body to control it, if you all sorts of different stances. So we know as a special forces operative that using our rifle up against this piece of terrain will give us lots of control. And Alec can use that then to search for the general, um, potentially take shots if he wants to as he tags all of the uh, patrols and the, this, the, uh, the enemy. doesn't look like the general is here. So we're going to have to go deeper into their facility. What you see here is a server uh, location that we tagged earlier in other reconnaissance. So what we're going to try and do is sneak into the center of their uh, camp, uh, their base, and we're going to hack into their servers, use their own security cameras to see if we can't locate the general. The game is never going to tell you where your enemy is. You have to do your own reconnaissance. Right? This is about you being a uh, a lone guy behind enemy lines. Survival. Uh, so you can't kill somebody if you don't know where they are. Uh, so you see Alec is being very careful as he moves through here because again the, end of the, the terrain is an enemy. He's watching for enemy patrols through here. The most direct route to that server is probably down this road. But it looks like, is that three? It looks like three snipers are covering this area. So Alec is going to use scout mode to find an extreme navigation way to get around. He's going to go up and maybe around. Maybe he's going to take out one of these snipers. As you see, there are vehicles in the game. There will be some jets that fly over uh, that can detect you. There are helicopters that are searching. Uh, if you get caught, it'll set off an alarm. They'll shoot you. Um, if the alarm goes off, it's not necessarily mission fail. Uh, however, it's going to make it a lot harder, right? So what we do is we give you challenges, and we give you tools to deal with those challenges. And it's up to you to decide how you want to tag things, kill certain targets, uh, execute your mission. Uh, if he sets off the alarm, uh, that's not going to be good for us. It's going to be it, probably demo over because we're in the middle of a camp. Uh, we're using the same build here as is on the hands-on out here. There are no cheat codes, no developer codes. What would you find here? <clears throat> it's a single trail. Um, it's a sniper, probably. So if he's alone, the whole his position is a bit dropped. So usually these guys work. Sometimes they work in pairs: a spotter and a sniper. The spotter will also do what they call sniper security, make sure that no one sneaks up on the pair of them while they're they're doing their work. But since this guy's working alone, uh, our training has told us that he's probably booby trapped the area. Alec will have to disarm this mine. Now you see he's tagged the guy here. So he has some several choices. He can either take him out with his rifle or with his suppressed pistol, but both of those do make some noise. And so it's always going to be safer if he can find a way to do it a little more quietly. No, 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 no. See, I almost okay. got caught. <laughs> right? Uh, so now Alec has taken out one of these snipers and, and has opened up a corridor uh, for him to potentially move through. 
Now, realism is very important to us. So you're never going to see a guard come out, put his rifle against the wall, light a cigarette. I hope nobody shoots me in the back of the head. Uh, they're all going to have duties. They're all going to have orders. They're all going to be. They're all going to have a purpose. So in this case, there were sets of snipers that were covering every angle going into this particular camp. Uh, and Alec has now opened up one corridor. There are factions in the game. Different groups of people. Uh, some of them have. Some of them are enemies. Some of them are neutral. You can interact with them. In this case, what you're looking at here are uh, Georgians. Uh, they're workers. They don't have any weapons, uh, but that doesn't mean that if a, an, uh, a foreign uh, special operative pops out of the bushes with a rifle, they're not going to sound the alarm. Uh, the Russians have moved into this, this mining town, this, this old mining community. They've taken over the mine. They've forced the Georgians into working for them, and they're building a, a uranium enrichment uh, processing plant in the old mine. They're doing it uh, over the border in Georgia to avoid international detection. This is part of why you're being ordered to assassinate this, uh, this general, because you want to slow down their progress. So you see how it can, can extreme navigate over those, uh, those rails. It's quite close now, so you've got to be very careful. There are no levels in the game. There are no skill points that you spend. You don't level 3, level 10. You don't click, I'm going to get better at sniping. Instead, you train, similar to what you would do if you were in the Special Forces. The more you use certain caliber rifles, the more you use your knife, the more you disarm things, the better you get at those activities. We think that this adds to the realism. So Alec has now made it to the center of the camp here. He's overlooking the server uh, location that we discovered earlier. So he's going to go through here and tag all the sentries, making sure that they're added to the mini-map so he doesn't get snuck up on. And then he's going to use his drone to try and sneak in there and hack the servers. Uh, drone, like the player, can set off an alarm. It can get shot. Uh, and and uh, it's got a, it obviously flies, so it's got some advantages. But this guy up on the roof makes it difficult. It'll get spotted. So Alec is going to have to take it out, take him out. So let me explain to you our sniping system. This is your rangefinder. He's about 100 meters away, a little over 100 meters. This is the air temperature. This will affect the flight of your bullet. This is the wind, obviously affect the flight of your bullet. This is the humidity. It will also affect the flight of your bullet. And this is the magnification. This will change based on what you've, uh, you know, you've crafted for your scope. So Alec, tell us about the scope. OK, so as you can see, right now it's a little bit uh, oversensitive. I need to stabilize it. So what I can do is to enter a stance called bottleneck. So I'm stabilizing my rifle on my arm, and which gives me much more accuracy. Uh, as just said, this guy is around 100 meters, so I'm going to calibrate my scope to 100 meters. And as you can see, there is a little red dot that appeared on the wind. And this is how far your bullet is going to drift based on the conditions. So Alec is going to breathe out. One shot, one kill. So now he's got a corridor that he can use for his drone. Uh, but of course, he doesn't want to just stand there like a dummy on the, on the edge of the cliff with his control. So he's going to back up into cover so that he doesn't get spotted by a patrol or a passing helicopter. It's a hard part, so I need to stand up. <laughs> yeah. So the, the drone flies similar to, the, to a regular drone, right? It can, it can drift around. You can hit things and damage it. Uh, it's quite fun, but a little bit difficult. He's got to avoid the, the patrol route for the helicopter. You can see there's intel that the drone can pick up for you. He's going to try and go over the top and in through the window so that he's got a straight shot down from the, the, the balcony. See, it's discovered a, a, a sniping spot that you could potentially use for, um, for, for further missions. Uh, this is you basically knowing what vantage points would be good to use. But again, you don't have to use the sniping locations. It's up to you how you execute your mission. Ah. <laughs> uh, Alec hasn't had his vodka today, so his driving is a little impaired. <laughs> I'm done. So now he's in the center here. He's got a pretty good vantage point. 
pretty close now, but he still has to watch out for these patrols. And <clears throat> I need to hang into this little small, small little bunker. This is what I call my Luke Skywalker moment. Movement detected. Oh! Ah. Oh, 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 come on. No, 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 no. Ah. <laughs> uh. Movement detected. Anyway, so here we are. Um, we've got servers. Uh, this one we've hacked into is access uh, three different camera networks. You can see there are five cameras here and seven here. So we're going to hack this. Take control of it. And now Alec can control the cameras. You can see you can use your scout mode through the cameras. That's, that was the hotel entrance. There's a couple of turrets here. The helipad. One guy there. Here's that control again. So it looks like uh, the general is not here. Uh, not on this side anyway, so we'll have to try another set of cameras. Nobody here. OK, here's our general. Uh, this is one of the cooler storytelling tools that we've got. Right? We have our own mocap studio. So whenever you're near uh, any NPC interaction, uh, through a security camera, through your drone, or nearby, you can overhear their conversations. And this will advance the story, the main story, the subquests, quests uh, the, the overall world story, uh, and everything. Every single interaction is voiced, so you can hear all of that. This is the, the, the general and his wife. I'm going to zoom in. A little bit of a voyeuristic moment. Uh, I always feel like we're intruding on them. Um, I should say, this is the, the general and his soon-to-be widow. Future widow. Uh, she is the head of the, the uranium enrichment facility, which is built inside the mine. You'll be able to go down there and run missions in there later on. Now that we've tagged him, we know where he's at, we can move on to the second part of our mission, which is killing him. So you see here that we've got his name, we've got intel we've collected on him. And these other locations, these other things you're seeing are our sniping locations. We've unlocked these at different points. The white numbers are the distance from that sniping location to our current position. The yellow ones are the, are the uh, distance from uh, the sniping location to the target. So Alec, which one do you want to use? <clears throat> OK, so I think I'm going to take the first one. It's this one? the closest to my location right now. And it's the longest shot. So yeah. You're going to show off your sniping skills? I'm going to say that, but after the drone, I. Don't yeah, right? Know. Yeah, I'm not can, sure anymore. Can you look uh, real quick back? Yeah. At, so you see this one location is only three meters away from our general. You, if you wanted to kill him with a knife, that might be a good location to go to. However, we know that there's a battalion of Russians here, right? So probably not the kind of uh, location that you could exfiltrate from. However, if you spent a day or so or several hours watching his, uh, his movements, perhaps at a certain time of day he meets with his commanders, you might be able to hide in another location and take him out with your knife. Uh, the advantage that this position has, uh, though it's going to be the hardest shot because it's the farthest away, uh, it's also going to be the farthest away from his guards, which means it'll be easier for him to exfiltrate. When you, if you read about any of these like elite sniper programs, right, these like special ops sniper programs, obviously shooting is an important aspect. But the other, maybe even more important is, aspect is stealth. That means you have to learn how to infiltrate and exfiltrate. No one is coming to get you in this game, right? You are on your own. You're going to have to plan your entry route and your exit strategy. You need to know what's behind you. So Alec has left the facility uh, and is, has to uh, enter the perimeter again because his vantage point was kind of on the outside of the perimeter. So he's, he's sneaking back in. And he's going to move his way to the sniping location here. While he does, are there any questions on anything we've talked about so far? Uh, using what? You can you can calculate however you like. Yes. They, they, we're trying to, to, to make it as, as accurate as possible. So if, if you are a trained sniper, uh, well, we, we do have a, <laughs> we have an ex uh, sniper on on our staff uh, who you know is is advising us on all of these things. Uh, any any other questions? Yeah. You have to use those that uh, sniping point to take out the target. All up to you. Uh, a, a 
again, it's challenges and, and tools, right? So these are things from your training that you think these would be good vantage points, and there are advantages to it because you know when you're selecting them how far they are from your target, um, but it's really up to you. You know, your longer shot and, and all that stuff. We're going to do achievements for you. I mean, of course you want to know how far and, and what the most wind, you know, what the worst conditions were that you shot in, all that stuff. Are you rewarded in any way for taking a target out with a knife on close? Uh, well, you know, the more you use it, the better you'll get at it. Um, but it's really about your play style, right? We want you to be able to play the game however you want. This is not a run and gun shooter, right? This is really tactical, and so we're. We're not going to tell you the best way to do it, right? We're not going to tell you you have to do it the way we want you to do it. Instead, what we're doing is we're setting up scenarios uh, that we think would be realistic, and then we say, okay, here are your tools. Go get them. Um, and obviously, we want to make it fun. So there are going to be some things in reality that are maybe not in the game because that would just be too hardcore. But uh, you know, realism is, is, is very important. So we're getting close to our location here. What are you, what are you learning here? <clears throat> so this is a set of two trucks. So probably there's a sniper and a spotter. So no lines, but two enemies. So he's going to have to take out one very quietly so that the other doesn't hear it. Otherwise, he'll raise the alarm. Uh, and at this point, if the alarm is raised, we're super deep in, in inside the Russian camp. Uh, odds of us getting out after t killing the target really low. You see he dropped a, a machine gun. Um, you have to prep for these missions, right? You can't carry you know, every weapon you pick up, right? So uh, you pick them up for, for, uh, for crafting and such. Okay, so now, this, now our spot is clear. We can get into position. You see there another stance that's, that's suggested uh, based on our training. This would be, but you don't have to use that stance. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, you'll see that Alex is going to take a different stance. So here's our guy. We spent the last few days learning about him and his movements. Uh, we intercepted. We hacked into their their computers. We got his orders. We realized that he's unhappy about the speed that the uh, processing plant, the um, enrichment facility, is moving forward. They're behind schedule. And he's told them they have three days to get back on schedule, or he's going to deal with it himself. We also know where he's going to be after today, the next couple of days. So if we wanted to try and take him out at a different location, we could do that. Uh, if perhaps we're happier, we like the, the city better than, than, than having to take him out in the middle of the, the, the military camp. But you can see the, uh, the, the soldiers that have been here have been pushing, the foremen have been pushing the, the workers very hard because they're trying to get up on schedule. Uh, and the, they know the general has arrived, but they still didn't make it. They're not on time. Uh, and the general is here, and he's going to take matters into his own hands, despite the fact that we have a labor dispute. There's only one way to deal with something in a Russian military, apparently. So he's not a very nice guy, so we're going to go ahead and do it. Another shot, another kill. Now the alarm has been sounded, and Alex needs, Alex needs to exfiltrate. He's going to go run and get the machine gun. So for the demo, we said, just, just for time, we're going to go ahead and send a Black Hawk in and exfiltrate him, pick him up. Uh, also, choppers are just cool. But in the actual game, this will never happen. You will not be, you will not be picked up by a helicopter that just suddenly drops in. You're, you're now going to be responsible.
away anymore? I was supposed to bring some men for the boss. Don't kill me. Be careful with your drone. If you fly it too close to the dishes, their signals will interfere with its frequency. Target's down. Nice shot. Now get out of there. Tell me everything. Stop it! I'll cooperate!
See the target. Over. Roger. Take him down. Target's down. Good job with that antenna. Don't stick around. This looks like the church Frank was talking about. Damn. Looks like they're digging their own graves. There's no time to waste. Hi, I'm Alex Seinach. I'm a narrative designer at CI Games. Hi, I'm Tomek Andrzejewski. I'm the lead artist at CI Games. My name is Tomasz Pluski, and I'm a level designer for CI Games. We're currently working on Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. Being a lone soldier in the middle of armed conflict is the experience we're excited to bring to players. Authenticity is key in this game. Quite literally, every bullet counts. Instead of just shooting your way out of trouble, you're actually fighting your way straight into it. Now the hunter becomes the hunted and you must survive the consequences of your attack. This isn't the same sniper mechanic repeated over and over. Every kill has a consequence. Sometimes you have to use anything and everything you have at your disposal. Target verified. information. Even morality comes into play. It's as if you're inside of a war story ripped from the headlines. Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 is much more than a sniper simulation. It's a whole and varied experience. The decisions anyone would have to make in those situations are yours to act on and solve. The scope is much wider in Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. Combat has to be strategically implemented from up close as well as from afar. There are multiple ways to approach the maps and situations, which is a significant expansion from previous installments. We see this as a natural evolution of the genre. 